I've had a hard time with my father-in-law because he doesn't help at all. When sales at our shop are low, I punish him by not giving him dinner. My sister-in-law said she made him work all day and sometimes he didn't get any food. My brother just smiled foolishly at this. I decided to take our father in. I was glad to finally be rid of the burden, and now I could relax. That's how our new life with my father-in-law started. But it turned out that having my father-in-law stay with us was actually a blessing. My name is Sarah, and I'm a 33-year-old housewife with a part-time job. I live with my husband and our daughter, who is in kindergarten. My husband recently took over the ramen noodle shop that his father used to run. As a child, he would watch his father work, fascinated. His dad would start making ramen early in the morning and sweat while cooking. My husband admired him a lot. He would say the water sparkles around his dad when he shakes the noodles like he's dancing with the goddess of ramen. When I heard my husband say that, I wondered if he was exaggerating. But when I tasted my father-in-law's ramen after we started dating, I understood. I too saw him dancing with the goddess of ramen. My husband and I got married in our mid-twenties, and a few years later, we had a daughter. Those were our happiest times. Unfortunately, my father-in-law fell ill soon after our daughter was born and never recovered. Since my mother-in-law had already passed away too, my husband's sadness was immense. He wanted to close down his father's room and shop, but the staff and regular customers convinced him not to. They told him, you're the only one who can take your father's place. You've trained us for over 10 years. It would be heartbreaking if we couldn't taste those flavors anymore. You can do it. Encouraged by their words, my husband decided to keep the shop open. He said, watch over me from the other world, dad, and stood up to the challenge. But it wasn't easy. Every day was a struggle, even though he could make the same ramen flavor. Customers always compared him to his father. They wanted a taste even better than his father's. However, we didn't get as many customers as we hoped, and my husband was very stressed. Around this time, my own mother passed away. I was worried about my father, who was grieving and living an hour away by car. I couldn't visit him often. Just when I was thinking about what to do, my brother surprisingly offered to live with him. While I was happy about my brother taking in our father, I had mixed feelings. My brother has always been a bit irresponsible and his admiration for Jimmy Fallon only made me more worried. Another concern was my sister-in-law, Elizabeth. When she first met us, she said, your husband dropped out of middle school. That's unbelievable. And then asked me, you're working part-time. If you can't be a full-time housewife, aren't you a loser as a woman? She often says rude things like that. My brother and his wife didn't come to my mother's funeral. My brother, who had quit his job to start a coffee shop, said he didn't have time. When I asked him when he had learned about running a coffee shop, he said, I've always wanted to try it. I have fun ditching work and going to coffee shops, so I thought, why not start my own? Hearing that, I felt like I was about to faint. Even though my brother took in our father, he's now making him work in his coffee shop. My brother isn't paying our father any salary. I thought his wife should be helping first. When I asked what my sister-in-law was doing, she said, a man's worth is measured by how well he provides for his wife, right? That's why I'm not working. I thought, really? She can't even add an end to that, aha. This lazy attitude was annoying. I couldn't understand why my brother supports her. One day, our family decided to visit my parents' house for the first time in a while. We had told my brother beforehand, but when we arrived, only my sister-in-law, Elizabeth, was there. Hello, Elizabeth. It's been a while, I said. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to watch TV, so make yourself at home, she replied, as unbothered as ever. Elizabeth, where is my brother? I asked. He decided to open the store at the last minute today. Apparently, we're having a slow month, she said. I was stunned that my brother suddenly decided to open the shop, but I was even more shocked by Elizabeth's attitude. Even if she felt that way, I couldn't believe she would say it in front of her husband's sister. Still surprised by her behavior, I headed to the living room, but no one was there. I couldn't find my father. I decided to check my father's room. I knocked but got no answer. Feeling uneasy, I opened the door and said, What's going on? I was speechless. My father's room was gone. Instead, it was completely pink, so bright it hurt my eyes. Elizabeth, something's wrong with my father's room, I said, thinking my father might have dementia. I hurriedly asked my sister-in-law, who was landing on the couch watching TV without any concern. 
Oh, that, it's my room now, so it's fine, she said casually without any concern. But wasn't that room my father's study? I asked. Even if there were books, you can't eat them, right? They were just a waste, so I got rid of them, she said. What do you mean you got rid of them? I was shocked. I turned it into my room. It's cute with pink, don't you think, she said. I didn't want to comment on the pink room, but I couldn't stay quiet about how she was treating my father. But Elizabeth, don't you have a room with my brother? I asked. Oh yeah, the biggest room. But I wanted my own room, she replied. And what about the room you used to use? I asked. Oh, that one? I turned it into a storage room. A storage room? I repeated, surprised. Yeah, I use it to store stuff I've been collecting since I was single, she said. What did she just say? I thought, as I went to the room I used to use, it was also turned completely pink. How much does she love pink? Wow, this room is all pink, said my daughter Lisa, who had come to peek with me. Many girls like pink, but even my daughter seemed overwhelmed by how bright and intense it was. The stack of pink cardboard boxes almost reached the ceiling, and the room was filled with so much pink stuff that it looked like the floor might give way. But I was more worried about something else than the pink room. I quickly went back to the living room and asked my sister-in-law, who was hugging a pink cushion, So where did you make my father's room? My room and my father's study are now pink rooms, and you and my brother are in the big room. The house had only three rooms besides the kitchen and living room. Before, these three rooms were for my parents, my brother, and me. Since my brother left, that room had become my father's study. So where was my father sleeping now? I had assumed he was using the study as his bedroom. To my surprise, my sister-in-law said, he's sleeping on this sofa, you know. As she said this, crumbs from the cookie she was eating fell onto the sofa. What? I was speechless at the shocking truth. Suddenly, there was a noise at the entrance. I went to check and found my father with a pale face, barely standing, supported by my brother. What happened to dad? I asked, helping my father, who was about to collapse. My brother shrugged and said, he collapsed while helping out at the shop. It's no big deal. Did he go to the hospital? I asked, worried. No, hospitals are a hassle and just cost money, he replied. Besides, if you have time, you could help out at the shop too. What? There's no way. You should make your wife work first. I yelled in rage. I took my father to the hospital immediately. When we got back home, I confronted my brother and his wife. How much have you been making dad work? The hospital said he collapsed from overwork. I said angrily. My father had collapsed due to overwork and was now lying on the sofa. I felt sorry for him, wondering if he really only had the sofa to sleep on. My face turned red with anger as my brother and his wife kept smiling. Well, he gets up at 3 a.m. for opening preparations, then does customer service, washing dishes and cleaning during opening hours, and works until closing at 8 p.m. It's not a big deal, right? Not a big deal? Are you crazy? Even prisoners get breaks. I shouted, furious at their treatment of my father. But my brother didn't seem to understand why I was so angry. We're living together, so it's natural to expect him to work this much, right? He said. What? I was at a loss for words. My sister-in-law nodded and added, Exactly. We're having a hard time with our father-in-law. He's totally useless. Oh, so on days when our sales are down, we punish him by skipping meals. But my brother never feels bad about it. Oh, and of course he's skipping today too, my sister-in-law said. What? Wait, what did you just say? I was shocked. Did she really call my father useless? And by punishment, did she mean skipping meals? This was unbelievable. My father had become a wreck, both physically and mentally. I was so outraged by how my brother and his wife treated him that I couldn't even speak. My sister-in-law continued, So, please take your father with you. What? I was confused. Then she put a large Boston bag in front of me and said, These are all your father-in-law's belongings. Wait, this is all of it? I asked. Yes, that's right, she replied. No, that doesn't make sense. There's no way all my father's belongings could fit into one bag, I said, shocked. My father had lived here for a long time, so he should have more stuff. All my brother did was smirk and nod at me. I was surprised and asked, is this really all there is? So we're kicking out the useless one. Bye-bye, my sister-in-law said. Excuse me, I blurted out in disbelief. My brother nodded and added, 
Yeah, he's useless, so living with him any longer would be a hassle. So, sis, you're going to take him in, right? What? I was about to explode at their ridiculous attitude when a cheerful voice interrupted. Yay, Grandpa is coming to our house. My daughter, who had been playing with my husband, must have been listening to our conversation. Still confused, I asked her, would you be happy to live with Grandpa? Yes, I would be happy, she replied. She probably didn't understand everything, but her words encouraged me. I then looked at my husband who was holding our daughter. He seemed to understand what I was thinking and quietly nodded. Yes, of course, it's fine. Let's live together with your father, he said. Thank you so much, I said. Our family isn't wealthy. The run and shop isn't doing well, and my part-time job doesn't pay much. Our life will probably get harder, but we'll manage. I can't just leave my father like this, I said firmly. I gently called out to my father, who was lying down. Let's go home and live with us. When I said that, my father opened his eyes slightly and said with a trembling voice, Sarah, thank you. Great, now we won't have to worry about the useless one, my sister-in-law added harshly. Ignoring her words, I brought my father home. It was incredibly frustrating. Losing our family home was terrible and I felt disgusted with myself for trusting my brother. I'm really sorry I didn't notice how he had become like this, I apologized. My brother used to be carefree, but I never thought he could be so heartless. My father shook his head with a frail smile. I pushed myself too hard to help my son. It's our responsibility as parents that he turned out this way. My father's kind words brought tears to my eyes. Holding back my emotions, I told him, You don't have to work anymore. Please just rest. We don't have much to spare, so I'll need to increase my part-time shifts while taking care of our young daughter. But once she starts elementary school, I can aim for full-time work. I'll do my best for you and our family, Dad. Thank you, Sarah, he replied warmly, smiling at my determination. From then on, peaceful days passed. My father seemed rested and regained his energy. He spent a lot of time with my daughter, who was happy to have her beloved grandfather around. Life was tough, but I never regretted welcoming my father into our home. He tried to contribute his pension to our expenses, but I refused, knowing he had little savings left due to being exploited by my brother and his wife. It's absurd how my brother and his wife considered him useless just because he had no money left. After a while, our family lived peacefully. However, a change came to my husband's ramen noodle shop. Recently, we started getting a lot of customers. One day, my husband said, That's good, isn't it? Yeah, it is, I replied, but he seemed unsure. What do you mean? I asked. I don't know exactly. It's booming, and I think the taste has improved with my daily research. But it feels like something more, he said, puzzled. If you don't know, I certainly wouldn't, I said, unsure of what he meant. After our conversation, I turned to my father and continued talking. I have a morning shift tomorrow, Dad. Could you have lunch at the shop? I asked. Sure. No problem, my father replied. He had fully recovered, and his appetite had returned. When I couldn't prepare lunch, he often ate at my husband's shop. My father liked the original flavor, and my husband made sure it wasn't too greasy, considering my father's health. Surprisingly, my father insisted on paying for his meals, though my husband always refused. You make this with pride, right? Then you should take payment. Keep business and personal matters separate, my father would say. Eventually, my husband started accepting the payment. The next day after putting our daughter to bed, my husband came home. As soon as he entered, he exclaimed, I figured out why the shop is booming. What was it? I asked eagerly. He did this and that, and then this happened, and that happened, my husband replied excitedly. No, speak properly, don't just mutter to yourself, I laughed. Let's calm down for now, I said, handing my husband a glass of cold tea. Finally, he relaxed and sat on the sofa, ready to talk about what happened that day. This afternoon, when I had some free time, your father came into the shop, my husband began. And then, as soon as he arrived, a crowd of people gathered around him. Huh? Why? I asked, puzzled. My father is just a regular old man. That's what I thought too. But according to our regular customers, my husband explained, live consultations with your father have become quite popular. Live consultations. I was surprised. What do you mean? Well, apparently, your father has been answering our customers' life questions, he continued. I was too busy cooking to notice. What? That's unbelievable. 
I said, intrigued to hear more. Over time, my father had become well known to many of the shop's regulars. With his thoughtful manner and background as a former teacher, he ended up listening to salarymen vent about their work problems. One man even claimed he got promoted after seeking advice from my father while eating ramen. No way, I exclaimed. Yeah, and there was a freelancer who consulted with your father while eating sweet and sour pork, my husband added with a grin. Then he got a job at the company he was hoping for and now works there as a full-time employee, my husband exclaimed. You can't be serious, I responded, taken aback. And there was a female customer who consulted with your father about her cheating boyfriend while eating fried rice and dumplings, my husband continued. No, he didn't stop cheating but now she's apparently with a new boyfriend, an Arabian oil tycoon. That's obviously exaggerated, I said skeptically. In reality, she ended up with a new boyfriend, my husband clarified. It sounds like an urban legend, I mused, looking at my husband with a skeptical eye. Just then, my father emerged from the bath, and I decided to ask him directly. Dad, is it true that you've been giving advice to people at the shop? I asked. Oh yes, my father replied calmly. Maybe because of my age, people find me easy to talk to. I wonder why. What kind of advice did you give today? I inquired further. I think it was advice to a father troubled by his son's behavior and to a college student who failed a course and decided to repeat a school year, my father recalled. So it's true, after all, I murmured, realizing he was indeed offering consultations. But those seem like problems dad couldn't possibly solve, I added, puzzled. The day ended with more questions than answers. A few days later, my husband shared the results of what seemed like an urban legend verification with a serious expression. Well, let's hear about this urban legend. What happened with the father of the troubled son your father advised the other day? I asked eagerly. Well, that father came back in tears, saying his son had come out and started working a part-time job, just as your father advised, my husband explained. Really? I exclaimed, surprised. Yeah, and the college student who was supposed to repeat a year? He decided to cheer up and do his best. Turns out, he's actually advancing to the next year now, my husband continued. No way, that's incredible, I replied. Apparently, he failed the course due to a strict professor, but after several visits and discussions, his report was accepted, my husband concluded. Can such casual things really happen? I wondered aloud. Isn't that just how university reports go, my husband shrugged. I wouldn't know, since I only finished junior high school. Well, it might depend on the professor, my husband remarked. My father's reputation kept rising. By the way, there were guys who didn't order anything when they came to consult, my husband continued. Some people really have nerve just going into a ramen noodle shop, not eating anything and only asking for advice. It shows quite a strong mentality, I replied. Your father doesn't give much advice to such guys so their situations get even worse, my husband added. So, your father is amazing then? I asked. No, that's not what I mean, my husband clarified. What is it then? I inquired. The increase in customers at the shop isn't because your cooking got better, right? My husband said he satanly. What? You're really going to say that? I responded, disheartened by his words. But actually, the fact that customers don't just order the cheapest dishes or drinks means the food isn't bad, all right? It seems everyone is placing proper orders, so it must be somewhat tasty, my husband concluded. And so, my husband's shop started to thrive, thanks to this unexpected turn of events. Of course, my father doesn't go there every day, but even when he's not there, there are always customers. That must mean the food is actually good, I remarked proudly. Good job, honey, my husband replied warmly. That's how things have been going smoothly in our home. However, a storm tends to come when you least expect it. This time, it was about my brother and his wife. One day, when I had a day off from my part-time job, I went to my husband's shop with my father before opening hours. Suddenly, the door opened, and my brother burst in, shouting. Give me back my father, he demanded, looking serious. His wife stood beside him with a determined expression. My brother, with a strong posture, briskly approached me, and said, my shop was struggling even when our father was helping, but yours is thriving thanks to father's life counseling, right? Well, I saw it on the internet. What's with this disparity? My shop is on the brink of closing down, my brother claimed accusingly. 
You were the one who dumped all the work on our father, weren't you? With that much workload, there's no way he'd have time for life counseling. I could see my brother stammering, clearly hitting a nerve. That's when my sister-in-law stepped forward. All he has to do is sit and counsel so he doesn't have to help out like before. You've come all the way to fetch him, so let's go back. I'm sure my father-in-law wants to live in his own house, doesn't he? She said, attempting to redirect the conversation, but her tone quickly changed when I reminded them that they were the ones who kicked my father out. There's no way we're handing father over to this wicked couple, I declared, ready to argue back. But my father stopped me. He held out his hand to indicate I should stop, then stepped forward calmly. Today, the two of you came to consult me because your shop is going under, right? My father asked quietly. Yes, exactly. If things stay as they are, my brother began to reply. So, if you could counsel at my shop, my father interrupted, just to clarify, those who come to me for advice are fundamentally customers who come here to eat. But your cafe, it's not good at all. What? That's not true. My brother protested. No, it is true. Firstly, have you ever learned how to make coffee? My father calmly asked, leaving my brother speechless. Somewhere along the line. I mean, I learned from the internet, and it's been fine so far, my brother muttered defensively. I thought so. Even the desserts like cake are inedible, right? No wonder your sales are down and you're on the verge of going under when you can only serve such things, my father remarked sharply, leaving my brother speechless. My brother tried to argue back but seemed helpless. Don't take your work lightly, my father continued. Your shop doesn't get customers because it's unpalatable. Conversations happen because customers come seeking delicious food. Your casual attitude is probably why customers aren't coming. You spoiled brats need to start over and learn from scratch. Facing my brother and his wife, who couldn't find words to retort, my father repeated sternly, Don't take your work lightly. Overwhelmed by my father's forceful presence, my brother and his wife left. In other words, they had come to my husband's shop, talked with my father, and left without ordering anything. The situation worsened because they sought advice without buying anything. Soon after, my brother's shop went out of business. He had accrued debt from starting the shop, which only increased and became unpayable. Before his passing, my father gifted his house to my brother as a final severance. However, selling the house couldn't cover the debt, and now they live in a shabby apartment, struggling with impoverished circumstances. It seems my sister-in-law also had debts of her own, adding to their hardships. On the other hand, our family is leading a smooth sailing life. My husband's shop is thriving even more, and I've quit my part-time job to help out. It's not easy, but working alongside my husband brings me happiness. When we're busy, my still energetic father helps care for our daughter, which is a big help. Recently, my father hasn't been counseling as much, but customers continue to come, a testament to my husband's hard work paying off. I'm happy about that. Today, my husband is at it again, making a snapping sound as he shakes the boiled noodles. The water sparkles, dancing upwards as he dances with the goddess of ramen noodles.